George, Jay, and Kevin. George is a blue belt now. I don't know if this is our first role on the channel since he's re received his blue belt. Uh, he definitely deserves it. Jay is a new purple belt uh, that would be new on my channel. And then Kevin is the purple belt that you've seen before on my channel. I'll have links in the description for George and Kevin. So George, I really, you know, he really took to uh, my advice that I've been giving him. And, uh, you know, he, I kind of feel like I took him under my wing a little bit. And what's happened is I've created a monster because he uses all my tricks against me now. Because uh, he's a smart guy and he just picked up, he learned. You know, he, he always had a good attitude when it came to learning. Uh, even though he's competitive, he didn't go crazy. He never got angry if he was losing. And uh, he actually would think it was funny. And I said, that's gonna lead to good jujitsu one day, and it did. So there he's trying to Toriando me. He's, you know, he's making me work. So I'm just occasionally grabbing his collar, staying super calm. When he gets near me, I engage. When he steps away and disengages, that's fine with me. I don't have to chase him around. An option when he does disengage is I could wrestle up, but it's dangerous. Uh, young people can't understand that, but when you're older, you're fragile, and I'd rather just sweep him in a controlled manner than wrestle up and try to tackle him and risk his knee hitting my rib or the various things that can happen when somebody's <laughs> resisting you from standing. And it might not happen to me, it might happen to him. He could pull his knee in the wrong direction. There's a lot of things that go on. So here he thinks he's passing, but I have my right hook in. Now I think I have both hooks in. And as you've seen on my channel, I work from this position all the time. So it either leads to a sweep or I get my guard back. So there I have, I always use a spider guard with no hand because I'm used to doing that with the uh, nogi. It's not a real spider guard, it's just I'm putting my foot on the bicep, but I do it with precision. Here we're laughing because I caught him with the tripod sweep and I think he said something to the effect of, I knew it was coming, but I couldn't stop it. And the only reason he can't stop it is I have it honed to a level where if his feet go into that position for a second, I'm able to hit it. And then it's something he has to recover from. So here I'm just trying to lean on him and pass his guard. I'm like being experimental. There I was able to shuck one leg out of the way, but he's still keeping his knee in. So I was gonna say before, I saw George rolling with somebody and he toriandoed, he went to knee on belly, then he went to north south. The guy's trying to bump him and I'm saying, oh my God, he looks just like me. So it's an honor to be mimicked if that makes sense. It means I'm doing something right. In jiu-jitsu, you have to, after a certain level, lead by example, or start to learn to lead by example. Because whether you like it or not, you're a role model for your classmates. So there I'm keeping my knee to elbow connection on the right hand side. He's trying to pull me in with, his, with the collar. His right leg doesn't look like it's doing anything. Here he's looking to play knee shield. But again, inefficient grips. He has me by the middle of my sleeve on, on one side. Uh, his knees are in, it's, he's not establishing a spider guard. So his legs are out of the equation. That's why I'm able to stay very calm and very slow and methodical. When I'm jumping around and using a lot of strength, it's because I don't know the technical answers.
and I'm not going to find them. So here he's got one foot on my hip, his other foot's on my shoulder. So George is using my four connection principle very well, but now he has to learn placement and accuracy with that principle. So there I'm letting him grip my collar very deeply, which is something I wouldn't do if he was a higher level player. Now he put me in full guard. It looks like I'm looking at the camera, but I'm just not looking at his hands and trying to hand fight without looking. By just feeling, because we're connected. It's not like he's standing three feet away from me and he's gonna throw a Superman punch. Now we're having some back and forth banter, which I know so, some of you like, some of you don't like. I'm resting. Oh, and that ends the round. So for this video, I included three rounds in a row. I thought that would be interesting. And also the rounds were six minutes, which are a little short. I want to give everybody something to watch, you know? So yeah, I love that scramble gi, by the way. I love scramble in general, a great brand. Doesn't look bad with the brown belt, dare I say. So I left the video in its entirety a little bit. I wanted to, you to see that there was no breaks outside of, you know, looking for a new partner in between rounds. There's Yeldar with the purple belt. That's Mike, the blue belt. I have videos with both of them. It's like Mike's rolling with George. So now I have Jay. Jay teaches boxing does volunteer work, he uh, works with kids, he's handsome, and an all-around good guy. He just got his purple belt. When he was a blue belt, he was a lot more physical. Like he made, you know, he used his physicality to achieve his jiu-jitsu goals. But now as a purple belt, he's come to realize to go a little bit easier and I think it shows in, 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 in this video, and I think that that's gonna lead to him becoming more technically skilled. He's got great athleticism to make up for it. Which could be the problem. Because then when you go to compete, you realize that you're not as technical as you thought you were, <laughs> or as good. So he's got the knee shield. The knee shield is low, and I'm flattening it with my ribs. And then I'm gonna probably look to kick my, that hook off that, from my left leg. But again, I'm just going technical and easy against a much younger, stronger opponent. Yeah, we got a boxing ring at the gym. We have an MMA ring. I'm actually picking up a new pair of MMA gloves. I'm not sure if you guys would be interested in those type of videos. If somebody wants to know my jiu-jitsu, there's plenty of video they could watch on me.
So he's trying to pull me into some type of guard. I've only rolled with Jay a handful of times, so I'm not sure, but I'm gonna guess that he's probably a better guard passer. Most people are better guard passers because it's easier. Because like that left leg has no connection right now. His right leg's not really doing anything. It's just preventing me from going to that side. And his left arm is highly out of position. So I'm looking to knee cut across the middle or possibly over his body. And here he's looking to come up to an armbar. But I was able to get out. I think he's working on my leg. So I'm looking for his back. That's the one good thing about leg attacks or bad thing is if they fail, you could have your back taken. And I've seen that before. Um, I think he's going for a calf calf crusher here. I can't see, but I'm 90% sure, and uh, he finishes me with it eventually. Again, if you've seen my videos, I'm a little susceptible to these. The slicers and the crushers. Again, these are all holes in my game that I have to fill before I could be a black belt. You know, that's what brown belt is, filling all the holes in your game. Or in your knowledge. Maybe it might not even be your game. You should have knowledge in all areas. Just because you don't play spider guard doesn't mean you shouldn't know it. That was a nice guard pass there. I don't know if I finished the pass, if I held it long enough. But it looked cool. And if you look, yeah, I moved a little quicker there, but I wasn't still at my top speed. I was trying more to be smooth and proper foot placement. And as anyone knows, that's probably my favorite pass. It's simple and effective. Here he tried to wrestle up. I was able to spin to the back. Very sloppy. Hey, everything can't be perfect. I'm 13 minutes into rolling and I'm no spring chicken. There he was able to escape, bring his legs back in. But again, if you noticed, I didn't use a ton of effort to prevent that escape. I'm not gonna say I let it happen, but I didn't go crazy and stand up and try to run around and all this stuff. I just let him, all right, you escaped, great. Get your legs back in, let's continue working. Here I'm threatening a toe hold, but not really. I'm just using it as a distraction. There he gets a spider guard on one side but I was able to strip it and the round ends. So that's my first round with Jay and uh, it won't be our last. So I look forward to making more videos with him. We're giving each other a little last minute. Post roll banter as I like to call it. Always a lot of respect. Um, I've never been in a school that had so many good training partners that weren't going to hurt you, uh, had your best intentions in mind, and you know were constructive and willing to help each other. A lot of times at these big name schools, they're very clicky and they have a, a, a their own hierarchy. We used to joke around and say, at Marcelo's, you're not a real person until you're a purple belt. You're just a barcode until you're a purple belt, which was a joke, but there was some truth in it. So here comes Kevin again. This is Jen's husband, as I like to call him. Kevin and I have a very similar jujitsu game, and we've both talked about it. We're similar, but we have our differences. I'm coming to realize the more I roll with him. I think he has excellent guard passing. And I think our guards are similar, but mine, I think I have more, just more time in. 
course, we both play in open guard style, and uh, open guard is the hardest type to play. I think. I think it takes, there's so many variables, they're endless. And that's why I enjoy it so much. So here he's looking to lead with his leg, which is fine. I have like a shin to shin guard. We're having a lot of good interactions already. Now he knows this position because he likes it personally. So that's why he's good at defending it. But the problem is the defense for it leaves other things open. And that's my meta on this position, if I'm using that term properly. Basically a string of events that I want to happen based off the first reaction. So here I'm looking for the butterfly sweep. Again, the problem is his game is so similar to mine that it makes him familiar with what I'm trying in many cases. So I'm trying to get my left leg back in the game there. I was looking for the tripod. He's leaning in. But I still have a Delaheva hook and his collar. There he's trying to strip my grip from his collar, but I'm just sliding down it like a rope. This happens a couple of times during our roll. Because he's stripping it down, and then I'm able to go down, and then on the bottom, it's hard for him to finish the break when really you want to strip away. So if you strip down, I'll just I'll just roll down your gi with my hand like or like I'm pulling down on a rope. See away, he just did it twice. So we're kind of going in circles because. Uh, we play a similar game and we both know what the other guy wants to do. So here he's looking for his double underhook pass or single underhook, whatever he can get. And then I hooked, I put my hook in his leg, which prevents that. And he, he almost passed my guard here. I have his collar wrapped around his throat, I believe. I could tell by the way the gi looks. Oh, and I let go of it. I still have a quarter guard, which I'm pretty comfortable in this position. I'm too comfortable. I'm coming to realize. So now he gained mount, and then he's switching to S guard a little prematurely there. He took his weight off me, and then uh, I have a good quarter guard now. I got good hand position, good arm position. I'm protecting my collar. And now I'm looking to push his knee back either push his knee back, or if he keeps it really stiff, I'll use it to shimmy away, to push myself up north towards my head, top of my head direction. Now it looks like he's trying to set up some type of collar choke, but I was defending and he identified that. So here again, I'm pushing on his leg and I was able to get my hook in this time. So it's not just a smashed quarter guard that's what I'm tr that's where I'm trying to go I have his collar I'm looking to wrap it around to prevent his hand from coming I use it as a shield to prevent his right hand from coming around my head So there I was able to escape the same way I always do, by getting my hook in and spinning around. And there, I gotta watch that again. It looked like he tried to come up and at the perfect time, maybe by luck, I was able to come up while he was doing that and get the sweep. Now he's got his foot on my hip with, one, with both uh, arms controlled. which doesn't scare me as much as having the collar sleeve. That grip is deadly. The only reason to control both sleeves would be to play a spider guard or throw up a triangle, which is exactly what he just did. 
He tried to throw up a triangle. So there's some good grip fighting going on there. Really interesting. It, if you watch, my grip fighting is mostly deflection. So that ends the round. Always a lot of respect between Kevin and I. Thank you for watching. Please like, and if you haven't already, subscribe.